Conversion of host name into IP address. What is a host name? So it may be any website address. It is yahoo.com, maybe it is google.com or gmail.com. Any such host name will be directly converted into IP address. That translation job is one of the main service of our DNS. The next one, host aliasing. What is host aliasing means? See, some people, uh, uh, for example, some people may have multiple names. So what do you mean by multiple names? See, uh, 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 let's assume that a person has one name which is very much lengthy, which is very much complicated kind of. I mean, complicated in the sense it's not easy for us to uh, uh, recognize that person or we cannot call that person by that name because the name is very lengthy. So what do we do instead? We shorten it. We try to shorten it. We uh, keep some pet name or something right so we call that pet name or that short name what we use to recognize that person to identify that person uh, and that short name can we call it as an alias name yes similarly here also some websites will have a complicated website address see uh, uh, and that complicated address it's not easy for the user to remember right so such complicated addresses here we call it as canonical ip uh, canonical host names so what is canonical host name canonical host name is the one which is complicated website address which the user cannot remember see hotmail.com, gmail.com, google.com, yahoo.com, whether these are all complicated uh, uh, um, host names, no, right, so these are all the host names which is, which is easy for the user to remember, but if the website address is something like this, just see here, I've specified an example, relay1.bestcoast.hotmail.com, whether this host, na host name is easy for a user to remember, such a lengthy one, no, so for us, what is easy to remember here, it is either hotmail.com or www.hotmail.com, right, so this is easy, so this short name here, hotmail.com or www.hotmail.com, we call it as alias name and this alias name we have given to which website address it is for this relay1.bestcoast.hotmail.com this complicated address we call it as canonical host name this for this canonical complicated uh, uh, host name we have given an alias name and that alias name is hotmail.com so now we can directly contact this particular uh, uh, website with the name relay1.bestcoast.hotmail.com using the host name hotmail.com the moment user gives uh, hotmail.com it will be redirected to the web page which web page the web page with the address relay1.westcoast.hotmail.com so it is something like a person if he has a complicated name you use one pet name or short name uh, through which you identify him so the moment you use this pet name will you be able to identify can will that person respond to you if you use the pet name definitely why because it is an alias name for him right same way this way this is also host aliasing and this host aliasing is also one of the service provided by our dns okay the next one mail server aliasing so what is this dns not only translates our uh, um, uh, uh, you, you can say not only uh, uh, translates your maybe search engine kind of websites or uh, any other websites it also gives the service for mails also mail servers also like as i said in my example gmail server or it may be yahoo mail server or it may be Redif mail server or hot mail server so dns service dns service uh, dns actually translates even the ip address uh, host name of the uh, mails Mail, mailing website to also the IP address, right? So this mail server aliasing is also provided, but this is also one of the services provided by DNS. So mail server aliasing means what? Uh, uh, see, some of the uh, websites, mailing websites may have, again, complicated uh, uh, names like canonical uh, name see this is an example same example this is a mail mailing uh, server's address which is complicated canonical which can be converted uh, or uh, which can be having the aliasing uh, alias names so dns actually basically here uh, gives this service mail service and server aliasing and last but not least the service provided by dns is load distribution so what do you mean by load distribution see here 
Uh, see, uh, um, one example I'll give for this load distribution. Okay, uh, I'll, I want to use the search engine Google. See, all of us, almost many wide, wide number of people across the globe, millions of people will be accessing Google at the same time, right? And do you think all of us, whatever we are accessing the Google, all of us are trying to contact one server which is belonging to Google? Is it practically possible? See, I'm using search engine. I'll simply type computer networks. Parallelly, there may be millions of people across the world who are trying to search about computer network. The moment they type computer network, whether the, all of us millions of people at the same time will be get the home page related to computer network? Definitely is. So is this possible with one Google server who is responding for millions of queries, millions of requests all over the world? Is it one server, Google server, which is giving the home page related to computer networks for all millions of people across the world? They're not possible practically. So there must be n number of such or hundreds of such Google servers, thousands of such Google servers replicated across the globe through which we are getting the response. We are getting the web page related to our search. Yes or no? So. Uh, practically uh, this is possible only with the help of replicated web servers what do you mean by replicated web servers google server is the best example google is the one which is mostly accessed by millions of people so web server related to i mean the google servers is not residing only in us or uk or anywhere it is just residing across the globe if I'm searching from Mangalore, the data, the server must be somewhere nearer to Mangalore. Somewhere near inside, um, you can say the server, uh, I can easily contact if the server is in India. Still more easy for me if the server is in Karnataka. Still more easier for me if the server is residing somewhere nearer to Mangalore or somewhere in our district, Dakshin Kannada, right? So the server should be somewhere nearer to me so that I can quickly get the response from the web server that I'm searching for. So here, what do you mean by replicated web server? Many IP addresses correspond to one name is, see, that is something like if I'm searching uh, uh, Google, uh, if I'm searching the web page related to computer network or simply say if I am on the Google home page, the moment I type google.com, my uh, browser will search, will try to contact the remote Google server, right? So that go for uh, my browser to contact Google server, my browser needs IP address of Google server. So for this IP address, who has to give the IP address? Our DNS will give the IP address of Google server. So which IP address the DNS has to give now? IP address of Google server. But which Google server, whether it is a Google server uh, in uh, which is located in Delhi or whether the DNS should give me the IP address of the Google server which is located in Mumbai or whether the, my DNS should give the IP address of Google server located somewhere in Dakshin Kannada. So definitely our DNS should give me the uh, IP address of Google server which is located in Dakshin Kannada. That means what? The nearest Google server should be located by DNS and that IP address only should be given to my browser so that my browser list later will redirect the query, redirect the request to the nearest Google server which is located in Dakshin Kannada. So DNS will have the various collect huge collection of IP addresses. So huge collection when I say it will have the IP addresses of all the replicated web servers. Replicated web servers means duplicate web servers. So it may be in my example it may be the IP address of uh, Google server in Dakshin Kannada that should be stored in the that should be provided I mean that should be recorded by DNS. Again the IP address of Mumbai web Google server also should be there with my DNS. IP address of my Delhi web server also should be, Delhi Google server also should be there in DNS. So all these replicated, these are all replicated, duplicate web servers, right? So all these IP addresses should be recorded by DNS. So that collection should be there in the database of, the database maintained by this DNS, right? So 
among them, among that collection of IP address, one will be extracted which is nearer and that will be given to the user, okay, or that will be given to the web browser. So, this load distribution, you call this as load distribution. Why it is load distribution here, tell me? Because, see, all the uh, users who are in Mangalore or nearby Mangalore or inside our district will be contacting which server? It will be contacting only Dakshin Kannada server. We will not bother to contact Mumbai server, right? So, load is reduced to Mumbai server. Why? Because uh, here Dakshin Kannada people are uh, uh, all, uh, I mean, people who are located in Dakshin Kannada will try to contact our uh, Dakshin Kannada Google server. Similarly, go to the next district, Bangalore. Bangalore people will be contacting again. Will they contact our DK server? No. Uh, our Bangalore people will be contacting Bangalore server. So, our uh, uh, server which is in Dakshin Kannada will not have burden of uh, responding to requests uh, responding to requests which is uh, arriving from uh, throughout the state right arriving throughout the state so that uh, so it's it's a, it's very much reduced burden is reduced on a single server here right so here the server has to respond to only requests which is coming from dk bangalore only the requests which are coming from bangalore next mysore only the requests which are coming from mysore similarly mumbai also some various various districts there in mumbai also so uh, you don't think that for a state only one server is there or something right so that is also very much burden on a particular server for a state if you have only one server so load distribution job also is done by dns okay so now centralized dns so i hope now you might be knowing what is the meaning of centralized dns centralized dns means what for responding here uh, for various queries what if i have only one dns for example for our entire Karnataka, if I have only one DNS server which has the database which contains the IP address of all possible web servers. See, DNS database, what it contains? All IP addresses of various web servers. Web server, when I take, it may be Google server or Gmail server or Yahoo Mail server or any such web servers. All IP addresses, if it is stored in one DNS server and that one DNS server, if it is only uh, available one to a state, okay if that is the case what may what what may happen there one thing is burden on a particular dns server all browsers all clients all requests will be redirected to that single dns server because that single dns server is in our state which has the various collection of ip address right so is it, one thing is it is a burden on that so you call that as traffic volume traffic is created at that single dns server next what if that dns server fails None of the users in Karnataka state can access any of the websites. Can They cannot basically contact any of the web servers, right? So that single point of failure is one of the um, reason which is dangerous. If that DNS server fails, nobody can access any websites. Next, distinct centralized database. Distinct centralized means what? What if, see, that DNS server is located somewhere in Bidar. Bidar, you know, it is one of the topmost, topmost, uh, far, far, very far from Mangalore, right? So, uh, uh, if that is in Bidar, so for our request to travel all the way from Mangalore to Bidar, it takes a lot of time. So, distance is also a matter. Maintenance. Maintenance means what? Definitely, if there is very high traffic, server should be maintained. It should be well maintained. Various... Uh, issues might be might have to be resolved there so maintenance also will be difficult right so that is very uh, bad thing if we have centralized dns and moreover main important thing is if a dns single there is single dns server it cannot respond to millions of requests thousands uh, lakhs of requests right so that lacks so you call that as scalability if the number of users increases dns uh, server uh, uh, you can say robustness decreases so dns server it's uh, it cannot bear the load so scalability is not possible so it doesn't scale here right so that is the thing there happening so that is that's about the dns services what we have okay uh, so next we will